Hey guys, welcome. I've got another video here on penny stocks. I've got a pick here called Entravision, ticker symbol EVC. Uh, this one popped up on my penny stock screener. Uh, I took a look at it and you know, on these penny stocks, what uh, the way my screener works is it kind of looks at some fundamentals and some basic numbers and sorts the stocks and, and looks at ones that might be good picks. And then I dig into them and I try to say, okay, well, is there a catalyst here that might drive the price forward? Is there a good story behind this one? Now, this one really stands out because there are a ton of individual catalysts, the you know, good news stories basically, that uh, have the potential to drive this price forward by a lot and, and maybe in the very, very near term. So uh, I was really glad I looked into this one. I think the, there's a really strong story behind it. Uh, let me tell you what it is. Okay, so Entravision is a Spanish language uh, programming company. And uh, so they're into radio, television, and digital media, you know, uh, podcasts and all this kind of thing. And uh, they're actually in a unique position. There's a lot of things I like about this company in terms of where they are right now. You know, I was really surprised to learn that uh, they have a partnership here with Univision. Uh, and, you know, in partnership with Univision, they have actually been ranked number one in terms of prime time Spanish language programming for over 27 years, uh, which is a really, really key agreement. That affiliate agreement actually runs all the way through till 2026. So I think they're still in a, in a really good position to own that top spot uh, for Spanish language programming, uh, which is a pretty cool market, right? So uh, when you look into what that market is and some of the growth projections around um, uh, that particular market, the, the total addressable market and the growth that's there is looking really, really good. Uh, the advertising market in that space uh, over the next three years is projected at about 13%. There's other good uh, stories behind these guys. You know, they have uh, recently streamlined the cost structure. I want to talk a little bit about that. And I want to talk about the shift that they're currently making uh, from their legacy business in radio into digital asset media. I think there's a good story there as well. So that's the basic overview. But now if you look at the space that these guys are actually playing in, they're diversified across those three segments, right? So radio, TV, and digital. And and the business is undergoing a transformation, obviously, right? So radio is slowly dying. Um, you know, I think people are, are, are prone to overstate the death of radio. Uh, it's absolutely still a force out there. Uh, it, you know, people are still buying and selling ads into radio. The trick with radio is managing the decline, right? So it's certainly not a growth industry. Uh, but while it declines, there's still money to be made as you shift into digital, right? And so I think these guys are in a unique position to do that within that span. Spanish language market, they're they're able to capitalize on the continued revenue stream out of revenue while they shift out and into digital. And if they can pull that off, you know, make money in the meantime, but still recognize the growth into digital and into new media, I think they'll do well as a result. Okay, so let's take a look at the snapshot uh, of this guy on uh, Portfolio One Two Three. Uh, this is my favorite analysis tool. There's a link down in the description. You can sign up and get access to uh, this and a whole bunch of other tools on the platform. But there's a nice snapshot here. You know, these guys. Uh, fit my criteria for a penny stock. I always look for something that's trading still under that $5 mark. These guys are down at three and a quarter as I record this video. They're a small company in terms of market cap, 273 million. They actually pay a dividend, which is highly unusual uh, for a small cap company. And I want to come back to that in a, in a second here. But uh, anyway, keep it in mind. The uh, growth story is pretty good. Uh, you'll note they've actually been able to grow the dividend uh, even into the current year. There was a cut, but overall the dividend has grown. Uh, the the sales numbers have been hurt by the pandemic, right? So uh, advertising spending definitely pulled back in 2020. And so they saw a drop in sales growth, um, but they're able to still pull in positive EPS, which is a really, really good story. Now on the value front, I would actually go so far as to say that this one is approaching a deep value play. And I think some of it is driven by that impact in revenue uh, in 2020. You know, if you look at the price to sales, it's below average, even for the industry, the industry is low, these guys are lower in terms of value. Uh, price to book is is almost on par, right? Down around 1.7 on price to book, uh, much lower than the uh, industry average. I, I really do think this stock is still a little bit mispriced in terms of value, even at 325. And the reason is that the turnaround, I think, is going to happen. And I think it already is happening, right? They've had two quarters of uh, surprise earnings to the upside, uh, which is a good story. And, and I really think there's reason to believe that may continue. The institutional ownership here is you know, not bad. I think a little over half of it is privately held. And so I think, you know, once we see that price pop above that 
smaller number. Again, there's more potential for additional institutional buying to happen for these guys. Okay, so I said in the beginning that this one has a lot of potential catalysts that could drive the price forward. So let's take a look at what these are. Um, number one is the fact that it is a deep value stock, right? Like those are impressively low numbers on price to sales and price to book. Uh, and I don't think there's particularly a good reason for that. I think it might be a little bit of a mispricing in the market. Um, I think these guys are poised to recover. And um, I think that the fact that they are such a deep value play, even at the current price, is, is really good for the future here. Um, I think we're going to see a turnaround in ad spend, right? So I think heading into 2021, I am bullish personally that the economy is going to recover. That's absolutely going to uh, drive recovery in ad spend. Uh, and I think these guys are going to see their revenues uh, recover uh, into 2021. And now is the time to bet on that turnaround, right? Because we're sort of at that sweet spot where it hasn't quite crystallized yet. But if you're confident that it will, I think this company is a good play on that assumption. I love the uh, target market story for these guys, right? So, you know, Hispanic growth in the US is eight times faster than the general population. These guys can actually reach 96% of that market. Uh, so that that really significant growth of that Spanish language programming market is a tailwind. I think these guys can capture a large part of that growth. And it is absolutely the right space to be in terms of um, uh, media ad spend right now. You know, uh, like I said, with the radio business here, right, and their their ability to sort of milk that radio business while they transform into digital, they absolutely have to do that. It's not optional. But I think there is evidence that they're doing it. They acquired this company called Cisnos Interactive, and I think that's fueling their transformation into digital. It's a higher margin business, uh, and I think it's where obviously where the the future growth is uh, in this particular industry. So I love to see this, and I think as they uh, digest that acquisition of Cisnos and really leverage um, that digital media capability and get further into uh, podcasts and, uh, and and targeted digital assets and that kind of thing, I think they'll do well. And I think that's a catalyst for growth. Another catalyst here, I think, is uh, these guys managed well through the pandemic, right? They responded by making some really prudent uh, cost-cutting measures. Uh, executive salaries were slashed. And overall, they had an 18% reduction in the workforce. Um, they didn't really get into a lot of detail on where those reductions were made, but I would assume that they were made strategically, probably in the radio business, right, as they're managing that decline. You know, we hate to see people lose jobs, but it's a good news story for the company because they're able to cut cost and coming into the recovery, they're leaner, they've reduced their overhead, uh, and they're probably in a better position to execute on the growth that goes forward with new hires and expansion in the right areas of the business, not these legacy ones. So that's what it's all about, right? Making those strategic cuts, cut where you need to, and then invest uh, for the future, which which in this case is digital. Now, back to that dividend, I think that dividend cut that we saw in 2020, uh, it, it probably will be reinstated to my mind, right? If they can recover those revenue numbers, if they can get back to a good payout ratio, I see no reason why they won't reinstate that dividend back up to where it was, possibly even increase it, who knows? And if they do, uh, I think it's going to definitely attract additional buyers. And I think, you know, if they can do that in combination with getting above that $5 price target, that's going to get a lot more eyeballs on this stock, uh, a dividend increase. And and a price increase up above that number. It's all good news. Okay, let's look at the downside risk though. Uh, I think these guys have a couple of significant risks. I think that, uh, again, it's all about that radio business, right? It's really, really tricky to manage a contracting business that's sort of in this legacy decline, right? So can they do this intelligently? Can they cut just enough at the right pace in that, ra in that radio business as they transition content and talent and all of those assets into digital, right? So, you know, it's not just as easy as transforming a radio show into a podcast. There's a lot more to it than that. And if these guys don't uh, do it well, they could potentially fail and experience a lot of painful declines in that legacy radio business. Now, the second risk here is the recovery of ad spend, right? Ad spend is incredibly sensitive to the uh, underlying condition of the economy, right? It stops like that if there's trouble. And so I think that uh, if we don't see the recovery when we expect it to in 2021, if it's pushed out to the latter part of the year, or worse yet, if it's pushed out into 2022, that's going to be a problem. We're not going to see uh, these guys' uh, revenue numbers recover as quickly as we would like to, and that could cause the stock price to languish a little bit and the business to suffer. So unbalanced, though, I got to say I like this one. I love the fact that it's a deep value play. I love all these potential things that could push the price up into the future. I think this one is actually a really, really strong buy. I love the story. Um, and so listen, if you want more picks like this, check out my Patreon. I post the top 20 results from my penny stock screener every weekend. Uh, so it's something you can check out on my Patreon and then look at potential
potentially making buys uh, into the next week. I think it's a really great resource for, uh, in terms of a starting point, to look into stocks that have stories just like this one. So check out that Patreon link down in the description. And if you like the video, please throw it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.